In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with Knot Diamond, which is a state of the art model router. What the model router from Knot Diamond allows you to do, as soon as you send in these query, within milliseconds, you'll get a response back on which is the best model of the models that you've predetermined to use at time of inference. What you can do with this is you can optimize for price, speed, or quality. So let's just take the price example. For instance, say you want to incorporate a number of different models. Let's say you want to incorporate the Gemini 1.5 flash model as well as O1 preview and maybe something like GPT-4.0. As you can see, the variance in price between these models is pretty dramatic between 10 cents and $26 per million tokens. So if I just demonstrate this, if you head on over to chat.notdiamond.ai, you'll be able to try this out for free. Let's ask a query of what is the news. It's giving us a response about election day. In this example, what determined the correct model to use for this type of query was perplexity, which is arguably the right answer. Because for a lot of LLMs, if we would have sent this into something like GPT-4.0 or O1 Mini, it wouldn't have the context of recent events, for instance. Let's just ask it a complicated question. And the important thing to note with Not Diamond is this isn't a proxy. You don't need to put in your API keys. This isn't routing directly to them. They're going to send back to you a payload with the model provider as well as the model that the model router determines that you should use within the application. So in this example, it was determined to use GPT-4.0 and we can see the cost here as well. One thing that I really want to emphasize, which I think is a really powerful feature with Not Diamond, is you're able to optimize whether it's for quality, speed, or price. And over the life cycle of your application or product, this could potentially change. You might be optimizing for the quality at first and then realize that it can be very expensive to use some of these frontier models. So another thing to note with model routing and quality in particular is when you combine all of these different frontier models together, you can actually get better performance than having each of these models individually. As you can see here, you can see the metrics of MMLU as well as human eval. And when combined together with something like Sonnet 3.5, as well as GPT-4.0, et cetera, you're able to get better results across the board by using model routing. Another great thing with Knot Diamond is you can also train your own custom model router. Say you have a set of evaluation data and you're able to determine that certain models perform well on certain tasks, depending on your use case, is you can actually send in that information and have a model router tailored to your potential use case. So for instance, if we go back to chat.notdiamond.ai, if you see these thumbs up and thumbs down icons, like you've probably seen on something like ChatGPT or Anthropics Claude, if you have something like this within your application, you can have your users determine what is a good response or what is a bad response. If you're collecting that data, you're going to be able to determine which models perform better on which tasks. What you can do is you can just start using their API today. And then as you begin to collect more data on what the preferred responses are in your application, you'll be able to ultimately train your own model router for your particular use case. To get started with Knot Diamond, you can go to docs.notdiamond.ai. And within the quick start, this is where I'd encourage you on where to get started. They have both a Python as well as a TypeScript SDK. And then all that you need to get started is a Knot Diamond API key, which you'll be able to get for free. From there, you need at least one API key from one of the providers that you're going to be using. Effectively, the way that this is going to work is very similar to something like the OpenAI SDK. You're going to send in your messages array, just like you typically would. From there, you can determine which models you want to use. Say if you want to use GPT-4.0 and GPT-4.0 Mini, as well as Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Within their documentation, you can check out all of the different models that are supported within here. And they basically have everything for the Frontier models. They have the OpenAI models. They have the Anthropic models, Google, Mistral, Replicate together, as well as Perplexity and Cohere. And then they also have the ability where you can send them a note if you want to see particular models listed in here as well. One important difference I do want to distinguish is the difference between model select as well as create. In that example that I just showed you, if you do want to stream out those results, just like you would within something like the OpenAI SDK or the Anthropic SDK, you can do so by invoking the create method. But let's just say you already have something like an SDK that you're using, or you're using something like Langchain or Llama Index or what have you, and you just want to have the model router sit in front of the logic that you already have. In that case, you could use the model select. Within model select, what this will do is it will return a payload to you, and it will specify the provider to use, as well as the model to use. So another nice use case with this is say if you want to use something like function calling or structured outputs, those are still supported. And what you'll be able to do is if you have a particular query that involves a needing function invocation is you'll be able to route it to the respective model based on that query. 
And if you've used anything like structured outputs or function calling before, you will know that these vary greatly between the different models. Being able to have this capability built in, it goes without saying that it is incredibly useful. Now, there are a handful of great examples within here. Say if you want to build a chat application, a reg application, an agentic workflow, or a handful of other examples, there are a bunch within here where you can check out on how you can get started. Now I want to demonstrate not diamond within an application that I've been building. So in this case, I sent in a hello world basic example. I didn't need an expensive LLM call for something like hello world. But if I say build a react component for a more advanced query, we see that it routed to GPT 4.0. So here we see our react component and it rendering on the screen. So if I put in another query and I say add in a header footer, as well as a purple and black linear gradient, we see there's our linear gradient and we have a header or footer. But now if I go back to a simple question and I say, hi, that's going to route to GPT 4.0 mini. You can see how this is useful, right? I'm going back and forth for simple queries. It's going to send back to use a model that can just adequately handle that query. And for the more complex examples, it's going to use something like GPT-4.0. All right, now I'm gonna show you on how you can get started step-by-step -step on how you can start to build with Not Diamond. So you can make an e-free account on Not Diamond. Once you've logged in, you can go ahead and create an API key just like this, name this something like YouTube demo. We can go ahead, we can create that API key. From here, you can open up your code editor. I'm gonna be using cursor in this example, but you can really use whatever you'd like. And then in this example, I'm gonna be showing you how to get started with the TypeScript example. But the steps for setting this up with Python are largely very similar. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and start a new project. So I'm going to bun init-y. Once that's done, we can go ahead and we can create a .env within the root of our directory. And then within here, we're going to type not diamond underscore API underscore key. And within here, you can paste in the API key that you just got in the previous step. I'm going to be showing you how to get started with OpenAI as well as Anthropic. So first, we're going to go to platform.com slash API keys. And then we're going to generate a new API key. From there, you can follow a similar process to get an API key from Anthropic. Once you have those API keys, you can put them within here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and save and close out the .env file. What we can do from here is I'm going to bun install non-diamond. Now, if you're using npm, you can npm install non-diamond as well. Once that's installed, you can open up your index.ts and just get rid of everything that's within here. And then I'm just going to command B to get rid of our sidebar there. The first thing that we're going to do is import not diamond from not diamond. If you're using an older version of node or depending on the runtime that you're using for this, you might have to use a .env. If that's the case, just make sure that you install .env just like that and then include it just like you see within the example above. In this case, we don't actually need this since we're using one. From here, we're just going to initialize the not diamond client. Next, I'm going to show you the example that's within the quick start. In this example, I'm going to be showing you the create method. And then after this, I'm going to show you the model select method. In this case, we're specifying our system message. You are a world-class programmer. In this, we're going to specify for the user to concisely explain merge sort. This is going to be the dynamic piece of whatever your query is for the application. And then from here, this is where you determine which models you're going to be using within the routing. Say if you want to add a new model, Let's say we want to use 01 mini from OpenAI, for instance. What you can do here is you can just add in a new line of the provider as well as the model name. And at any point, you can always go back to the documentation to see all of the different models that are within here. Now, the other nice thing within this is if you just want the IntelliSense, and let's say you want to just start typing out the model, is you'll be able to see all of the different model strings in here as well. Once we have that, we're going to show the provider as well as the result from the provider. Now, if we just go and run our script here and I make our terminal bigger for this programming specific question, not diamond determined to use Anthropics Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model. And this model is known for its ability with encoding. Here we see the response back, like you get back from using the OpenAI SDK or the Anthropic SDK. And the other nice thing with their SDK is there is a standardized schema, regardless of whether you're using OpenAI, Gemini, Anthropic, or what have you, it's going to normalize all of those schemas and give you that standardized response within your application. Now, let's say you already have an application that's pre-built. You want to try not diamond, but you don't actually want to go in and change it out for their SDK. What you could potentially do is regardless of whether you're using something like the OpenAI SDK or Langchain or what have you, what you could put in front of it is you could call the model select method. And what this will do is it's going to return just that result 
of the particular model that you're going to be using. So if I bun index.ts, the nice thing with the model select is you can just get the provider as well as the model string. From this point, you could just route it to the particular model that you want to use within your application. The nice thing with the model select method is you have a little bit more control on where you can route your query. The model select is a good example on how not diamond works under the hood. Because not diamond isn't a proxy, although when you're using the create method, it might seem like it. What it's actually doing is behind the scenes within their SDK, when you're using the create, it's going to return a payload similar to this. And then once it has that payload is it's going to route that query to the respective provider, as well as with the model and query that you have. I do the model select method because it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of where you want to set it up within your application, especially if you already have pre-built logic. Just to show you within this application that I showed you a little bit earlier within this, I have a ton of different models. And what I was able to do is I was able to use that model select and just route through the already existing logic, depending on the key that was selected and returned back from not diamond. It actually proved to be easier than I expected to set up. That's it for this video. I wanted to do an in-depth introduction on not diamond, why to use it as well as how to get started. If you found this video useful and you want to see more advanced use cases on how to use not diamond, stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to be publishing some of those over the coming months, but otherwise, if you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise until the next one.